On the 28th of February, 2020, Lagos confirmed his first coronavirus case. And from there, everything spiraled down. Schools, places of worship, businesses, offices and event centers were shut down. Then, a lockdown was imposed. Food. One of the essentials for human survival was considered during the lockdown, with many school spaces converted into mini markets. One could easily assume farmers were making some gains during the lockdown. Right? Wrong. Many farmers were stuck with produce they could not sell, throwing away lots and lots of their produce. And also other vegetable farmers, insects eating up the vegetables. When we heard that there, were, uh, there was going to be a lockdown, then the fishes I have, I have to call somebody. Somebody introduced that person to me that, you know, he should come and buy our fishes. So that person came, he couldn't pay all the money. He said we should send somebody along with him to the bank to get the money so that he can balance our money. You know, during this process, the person that followed him, he tricked that person, they ran away with the money. So the little I have that I could use to feed the fishes. Well, even one of our members was involved. So I called that person. He said he would try and find him. He said, okay, if he couldn't find him, then I have not been able to trace. So I have no money now to feed the fishes, no, even to feed myself. I couldn't get the right feed. As uh, I'm into archery, you, you don't just change feed abruptly. But because I couldn't get the right feed, the feed I was using at the initial stage, I couldn't get them, I had to change. And when I bought what was available at the market at that time, giving it to my fish, they started dying. So I lost so many. But if, if the COVID, if there was no lockdown, I'm quite sure those feed will be available in the markets. So that was a major setback for me. And then the ones we were able to, salv to salvage from the, from the lot, getting buyer to come and buy them was another problem. We were just feeding, no buyer was coming. And when I got a buyer just two or three days ago, I had to sell at a ridiculous price. COVID-19 has impacted uh, negatively in our business. Because uh, it's not something that anyone planned for. It just came suddenly. And some of us that uh, collected uh, bank loans to stock our ponds, we struggled to come to the farm to feed. We kept on feeding, but uh, this, there's, there's not been sales. We have a lot of uh, fish in our ponds, and uh, with the, the selling is not coming, the marketing is not coming. We don't know, even know where to sell to. We just keep on feeding our fish, because those are our major customers. The hotels, the restaurants, the joints, the party, the, the caterers, they are on lockdown, so we don't have sales. Like you can see, all my ponds are filled up with fish. There's nowhere to sell to. So we are now going on selling, and yet we have to feed. Because if you don't feed our fish, they will cannibalize themselves. And it will amount to loss. Already we are having post harvest losses already now. So that is the dilemma we found ourselves in. So there has not been sales. Actually, it has been very difficult. It has been difficult in the sense that where we buy feed, we have been buying some feed, feed on credit and we have been sourcing fund to feed the fish from... I personally have been sourcing fund from family and relatives to give me money to buy feed so that I'll be able to... And, but we are, now we have to ration the feed. 
because the resources that we have is limited. Because the savings, the little savings and the business money that we had before the lockdown, we have spent everything on buying feed. As soon as we are able to sell now, we'll be cycling the money and be using it to, be, to turn it over to buy feed, sell fish, then buy feed and feed the ones in the pond. But now, it's on standstill. Nobody is asking us that what are we selling. Even the retailing selling that we thought we'd be selling in large quantities, the purchasing power is so very low. The population, they are saying they don't have money. Those that used to buy two, two kilos, five, five kilos every week before, they don't even ask. When you call them that, I do have supply, they say, I like that, there's no money. Don't bother to bring it. So, and even the ones that we normally process, they still smoke it because you can see they have smoking cabinets that we can process. But because we don't have all that to process, it's just there hiding. For the farm, I have four staff. I was able to pay them last month from the savings I had and then the little sales we had during the lockdown. For some of us that are privileged to go to the makeshift market, we're able to sell small, small, like 50 kg, which is so minimal compared to what we have in our spawn. So the little money I made from that, I used it to pay my staff salary. But this month, I don't know where I'm going to get money to pay them. I asked some of them to sit down, to sit down at home. I actually told some of them that, sit down at home, two of them to sit down so that I will not have to pay two. But they said, no, Elijah will be coming, whatever you have to give them, because they, are not, they don't have the hope of getting um, money from elsewhere if they don't come to order, whatever I have, I should give them. So I'm still thinking of where to get money to pay them. For the aquaculture, we have a lot of fishes in our ponds, which we took loan to raise, and um, there are no sales, nowhere to sell them. We don't even, we try to smoke some, because I'm, I'm uh, into production too. I produce, I smoke some fish, so uh, my smoke clean. They're in my freezer now. No, we have to sell them. If all these ones are sold, we won't be crying that loud. No money to feed, no money to do any other thing. We know that the government are trying. But we, are, we too, we are contributing our own quota. Yes, businesses are reopening, but some restaurants, schools, and event centers remain shut and this has affected the farmers. The loss is enormous uh, in the sense for the poultry, uh, poultry aspect. I do broiler production for meat, and it's mainly six weeks. I know the best I had before the lockdown, they were already three weeks old before the lockdown. So just on that three weeks before the uh, commencement of sales. But you know, because of the lockdown, there was no sales at all. So I just started giving it out, you know, at a very, very cheap rate, you know, in my neighborhood during the Easter period. Then they left, the last one just left during this, uh, the end of the fasting of the Muslim uh, religion. But you know, normally, well, as I did that three weeks, if not for the lockdown, once it's about three weeks, three weeks plus, I take another order for a continuous, you know, uh, stocking. But because of the law that there was no continuity, number one, then the sales of the one that I stock, you know, was, was hurted. I couldn't do that. Then for the egg production for uh, fowl, for the birds, there was no sales of egg. Because my major customer does egg roll at Agege. So she collects as much as 10 crates per week. And I have other people around that are collecting. But that business was also out of the way because she couldn't come out to sell um, uh, egg roll. So supply for that one was out of the way. Then I have turkeys. I breed with my turkeys local turkeys. So I have somebody that collect the eggs for me. We take it to the ashtray at Abelkuta. But because of the lockdown, no interstate movement, all the eggs that the best laid those periods, all we did was to eat them. There was no way we could take them to Abelkuta for ashtray. And, uh, and that's one problem we are facing because we have been talking about it. Lagos still don't have commercial ashtray at all. So during the lockdown, there were commercial ashtray in Lagos State. At least there was a pass for interstate movement, would I be able to use, you know, use the ash tree in Lagos State, you know, to ash those eggs? You can imagine you boiling up to 50 eggs of turkey. And you know, when you take 50 eggs of turkey to the ash tree, you are sure of like 90% results. And the time of the lockdown was the time a day old of a pot was being sold for 700 naira. So you can imagine you having 40 pots per week times 700. So those are the amount of money we lost. Even now that the lockdown is over, it's still skeletal. You know, now that the slow is down, it's still skeletal. We are just trying to, you know, push it. But we need ashtray in Lagos because we are not praying for other pandemics to come. 
something else could happen that we won't be able to go to Abekuta or Ibado, you know, to go and, you know, uh, take our eggs for, for Ashri. I've heard this uh, poultry, even despite how little they are, the eggs that we produce, we are unable to sell them. He said that even the little people that came, they said of the usual price, they beat the price down. And the price of the feed rise up. So that's how it affects me for the chicken. Though earlier, some of the chicken died. You can see this has some spaces here. So it's supposed to be more than this. Yeah. Earlier, some died. But with the little one that remain, we still find it difficult to sell our eggs. I sell 850. 800, 850. Uh, during this pandemic, the price for to 600, you see people come from other places to so give them at a cheaper rate. So they decided to abandon our own. For vegetable farm, though I have like two people that are cutting it in horses, people are coming to buy. But the problem now, we don't know where ants came from. Just eat part of the farm. Eat everything. If you see that side now, instead of living like that, just plant some uh, water leaf and corn. During the pandemic, some insects in form of worms entered the farm and we are devouring the leaves. But unfortunately, I could not go out because of the, the lockdown. It was so painful. I watched the vegetable eaten by worms. That's number one. Number two. Uh, the feed I had at home then got finished and I had to go and buy uh, some other feed. But uh, I didn't have the pass that were given to the farmers on time. Because where I was supposed to go and collect it is far from where I am now. I was to go and collect it from ADP and you know it's far from this place. Where is ADP? ADP is at Agege and I'm here in Abuli Egba, end of Abuli Egba, Agbele Kale. I couldn't go there to collect it, so I couldn't go out to buy feed. I had to buy feed near me here. And the feed I bought was so bad. It's the one they had long ago that they couldn't sell. But they sold it because there was no feed around. And I gave them to my, my fish and they died. Many of my fish died during that period. Then another thing, another area I was affected, not only myself, because as you can see behind you here, we have some other farmers. But I'm talking about mine. I'll, Talked about, uh, talk about theirs later. I have a poultry pen. I normally stock my poultry pen by February ending stroke March. So I'll be able to sell them by December. Unfortunately, I could not go. And my customer could not buy for me because there was nowhere for him to go and buy. He couldn't go and buy me uh, the seeds or call it the chicken that I will stock. I just gave him money this week. He went, today he's there at the market, he's bringing them tomorrow. So you see, I'm stocking my chicken farm very late. And they should be able to grow, they should grow enough to afford um, sales by December. So in that area, I'm highly affected. So this farm, as you are seeing, used to be very, 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 very uh, good. They bring out good vegetable with wide leaves. But this year, because of what has happened, this pandemic, you see, there is nothing. They are eaten up by worms. You are seeing ordinary feed. As at the time I bought the first one I planted by December, I bought a plastic of paint of ugu seed, 4,000 per plastic, per big plastic. But as at Monday that I went to go and replant, the one I will use that I've used now to replant this field, I bought half paint for 13,000. You can see the difference. I bought December, 4,000. I bought this week, 13,000 for half of what I bought, 4,000. So this is what we are going through. Many of uh, the uh, vegetable farmers cannot plant vegetable now, this year. How will we get vegetable in the market for this year? I don't know. <music>
I got a loan of five million naira from Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. That was uh, two and a half years ago, and I've been paying monthly. But uh, for the past, uh, since the lockdown, I've not uh, paid. But I heard in the presidential report that uh, they should give some waivers to us. But up to now, the bank has not uh, sent any formal notice to us whether they are deducting or not. But last month, they didn't deduct formal. There was even, there's no money in the account for them to deduct anyway. But if they wanted to the girl and they did not see money in their account like that, they normally send text message that you have defaulted. But personally, they know I don't default, so they have not sent me any text message requesting for money because there's no money in that account. When we sell, I always put money in that account so that when it's time for them to deduct monthly, they deduct it. But they didn't deduct last month. There was no money there. I don't know how I'm going to settle it. I'm supposed to pay up by October this year. But by October, it will be three years. But I've been paying. Since that time, I have never defaulted. I took 600000 as a farmer's loan from the microfinance bank. And I have to be paying 95000 every month, you know, back to the microfinance bank. So I couldn't pay in April, and I have not been able to pay for me. Because of the sales of loan, that there was no sales at all, so I couldn't do that. If I actually calculated that I would use that uh, Brella production, you understand, for the repayment of those loans. But that is hearted. But you know, as farmer, we'll do year, go year, just looking for money to go and repay the loan because you're not going to tell your creditor that uh, you didn't make sales. That's why you are not going to pay back their money. So we are really, it's, in fact, it's a burden on how to pay back the loan. I'm expected to pay the loan every 17th of the month. But during the pandemic, I couldn't meet up because there was no sales. And even after that, there's no sales. So we have not been, and the, um, the microfinance bank only gave us a month, and that was the month of the lockdown. So they are expecting me to pay by the end of this month of failure. Most women that, on, that, uh, that took loan, I, for instance, I took CBN loan. I will, I'm supposed to be due in June. So they now call me, hey, Madam, your loan will be due in June. I say, why the hell are you talking? Where did I work? that I will be paying loan. Which word did you give me to come and use in paying your loan? But haven't you heard that the federal government has, has uh, advised all uh, bank, uh, finance institutions or uh, banks that if you have customers that are on loan, you have to extend the dates for them. So you just drop, I drop to. They haven't called me back. If they call me, I'm, I'm ready to go to EFCC with them. Honestly, I'm ready to go to EFCC. Even the loan is there in their account. I cannot access it because it's in their coffers. I don't have access to it. Out of 10 million, I took uh, 777. That is what they are calling me to come and pay. To come and pay loan. I said, the money you are even calling me for is there. If you like, return everything. I'm, I'm, I don't care. I'm not even interested again. So, I'm still waiting, Sha. We hope that the federal government and the Lagos state government will come to the aid of these farmers quickly to avoid food scarcity. Small scale women farmers, so fun. Small scale women farmers, so fun. Small scale women farmers, so far, no farmers, no food, no nation.